Hell yeah, who are you calling afraid to fuck himself? No, I mean, um, uh, uh, Lovage Residence. Residence? Sorry, kid, I don't speak French. Uncle Larry? The one and only. How goes the Echo Planet career? Are hippies easy? Oh, yeah, my life's incredible. My carbon imprint is non existent. <laughs> ah, chip off the old block. Listen, Larry, I've always liked you. Maybe it's because you remind me of myself back when I wasn't the head of a film studio and super rich. Uh, uh, d does this mean you're buying my script? Larry, celebrity sex tapes are not scripted out, they just happen. Ah, rejection. What a shock. Larry, I need your help. Someone I can trust. Someone inexpensive. One out of two ain't bad. What do you say? It means a lot. What is it, drugs? I mean, I, I, I know a guy, but he likes to break my thumbs, uh, even though I've never even bought anything. Larry, I don't trust the phones. Is there any way you could fly out here for old times' sake? What old times? Heads up, Stinky. We're going to Tinselwood. I told you, man. He's my uncle. I'm just doing my job. Now, come on, Larry. Quit clowning around. Get in here. He tasered me. Be glad they didn't get to the cavity search. How did you get here so quickly? Well, my trailer park's just three blocks away. Well, I'm glad you could spare the time. Here, let me show you around. All set? Then strap on something tight and hang on with both hands, nephew mine. You're about to enter a world of magic and dreams. Over in our right now, those are the executive offices, the seat of my power, engine of my hubris, and home to my penthouse suite, a chamber of carnal marvels beyond the horniest straight man's sickest fantasies. Wow. Can we go inside? Sorry, Larry. <laughs> We're still doing magic and dreams, not fantasies. But also on site is where you'll find my right-hand man, only this one is a woman, and ice water runs through her veins. A good, strong gal with durable breeding hips. Denise. Ah, there she is now. Hey, how goes the ball busting, Denise? Say hi to my good nephew here, Larry Lavage. I don't have time. Some of us work for a living, you know. That's what we like to hear, Denise. Rage! Up here is the mail room where we'll find our gruff but lovable resident curmudgeon Merv Walski, making sure no private parcels go uninspected. We'll catch up with Merv later. Okay, <clears throat> this looks isolated enough. Larry, it's time I told you why I wanted you here. Uh, I'm mostly ears. I noticed that. Maybe we can pay to have them fixed later. Larry, I've learned from my private investigators and life coach that there's a plot afoot to ruin my company. But I'm enjoying your company. Your personal... No, as in my studio. My rival, Big Amos, the even seedier tycoon who runs the bigger soulless movie studio across the street has infiltrated my staff. One of them's a mole. A wasp intent only on sabotaging everything I built or outsourced. Larry, I need you to uncover the identity of this mole and expose him. I thought they lived in hills. No, not that kind of mole. So, you want me to investigate, but have no authority, influence, or access? Exactly. Loserdom is the perfect camouflage, and in your case, it'll be especially convincing. Maybe too much so, actually. Well, won't introducing me to everybody as your nephew kind of give it away? Good point, Larry. See? Thinking. That's why you're perfect for this. So, if I find this mole, I should come to you? I'll be incognito for the rest of the week, but my assistant, Denise, will know what to do once you've gathered enough evidence. Uh, but so, what if, say, Denise is the mole? Larry, don't be ridiculous. I'm sure she'd be woman enough to turn herself in on criminal charges. She may be a bit cold, but she still has scruples. Ah! I'll try to keep that in mind. 
Well, Larry, this is where your inaugural tour of Laffer Studios ends and your magical toil begins. I'll just introduce you to my good friend here, and you'll be squared as butter. Who's the newbie? He doesn't look union. Larry, this is my dearest friend in the whole world, Ebenezer Weatherby. My name's Al Jones. I'm promoting you to being in charge of Larry, you know, showing him the apron strings, the whole nine inches. <laughs> Can't wait. Oh, <laughs> that's the spirit. Treat Larry as you would me. Larry, congratulations and welcome aboard the media conglomerate. Um... Which office is mine? You don't get an office, asswipe. You're not going to be doing much sitting around here. Now sit down and let's go over the three golden rules of your new existence. Rule number one. It's Mr. Al to you. Really? Rule number two. You do everything I say, no matter how disgusting or illegal. Uh, how illegal? Rule number three. I don't give a shit whose nephew you are. Around here, we work our asses to the bone. And trust me, it's got bones. Any questions on the first three rules so far? Uh, yeah. Where are the honeys at? Broads? Come with me, Romeo. Oh, in my sleep. Uh, hey, by the way, is that loud? This one's probably more lifelike than the ones you're used to. What we get to do now, and by we I mean you, is scrape this thing so clean it sparkles like a firefly's doohickey. Think you can handle that? Yeah, hey, hey that sounds cool. Thanks again. Um, lunch later if you're interested. I was thinking maybe Japanese. Get, no? Yeah. Huh. Maybe if I stroke faster, I'll be done sooner. All right, kid. Magic of filmmaking for tards. This here's called a mini-map. You use it to find mission objectives, critical locations, and to see the world smaller and less confusingly. Arrows above or below these show whether they're above or below your current position. If you'd like to know more, Chapter 17 of Minkowski's Exegesis on four-dimensional space might prove illuminating to the relatively dilettante. A good read, but a little preachy. Come on, kid. Pretend it's your cousin. Get in there and scrape. What kind of sick bastards would vandalize a soundstage besides... Yeah, that is not how you draw a dick. It's completely out of proportion. Hey, that's the same stony icon from my dream. Maybe that's my subconscious's cue to hit the interact button whenever I see it. Oh, man, this studio has it all. Not too shabby, lovage. Shabby, but not too. We might make a broom closet mascot out of you yet. Graffiti. One man's art is another man's restroom entertainment. All right, Larry, you've conquered all ground-level grime. Congrats. Now scurry up that ladder and keep at it. That shit ain't gonna clean itself or we would've hired it instead of your sorry ass. If they made the billboard smutty enough, nobody would have needed to deface it. You call this graffiti? I've seen bigger dicks in the mirror. <laughs> 
seriously, did any of these guys go to art college? Right, this requires a jump. Not a problem. Yeah, I'm no expert on big penises, but I believe the aim of drawing them isn't to represent their outward appearance, but their inner significance. If you press jump again while in midair, you'll soar even higher, like a bird only with buttons instead of wings. 